Hello, everyone. My name is Kent Tramell. I teach Blender and the art of computer graphics at CG Cookie. Uh, is everyone having a good time? Day two. Beacon. Good, good, good. I am as well. And uh, let's hope I do not take away from that time in the next 20 minutes. So uh, there's a format that's been developing at CG Cookie pretty organically over the past few years, which we call collabs. And they're essentially community sourced animation productions, uh, trying to combine the power of, uh, of students and instructors with Blender uh, to create bigger projects than an individual. And uh, so far, we have created uh, three animated shorts, which I'm extremely proud of, um, not just because I think they look kind of good, but um, being part of the team is something I'm very proud of as well. Um, I, I imagine some of you can relate to a lot of your work, like me, is very individual, um, self-directed, which is awesome in and of itself, uh, having that uh, complete freedom, especially paired with Blender. Um, and that's great and that's satisfying, but uh, in my experience, it doesn't compare hardly at all to the satisfaction and reward of completing a team project. And um, for that reason, I believe animated shorts are very important uh, for the community. I think that they inspire people to get into Blender in the first place. I think that they challenge people who already are learning Blender to uh, push themselves to the next level. And I think that they provide a very unique production environment, a unique way to apply those skills in a way that you can't really emulate short from you know, being hired. And so I, I think I'm not the only one in the room that always looks forward to the next uh, open movie. Our hearts break a little bit whenever they get canceled. Um, I'm looking forward to the next Dynamo Dream episode. I believe that's coming out in a week, if I remember Ian correctly. Um, the Watermelon Girl, Girl short, I mean, how great was that from Southern Shoddy, uh, five years working by himself. That's an incredible achievement. I really enjoy William Landgren's shorts as well. Um, Blender Bob is here with the, uh, gonna be talking about the Tiki project. Um, we all love shorts and we're doing, we're doing a lot of them, but I believe there's room for so much more. And um, so in talking about Collabs today, I not only want to share what I'm excited about that's happening at CG Cookie, that's, that Blender is enabling us to do, but I hope it might inspire someone to do something similar in their own sub-community. I think of all the YouTube creators out here in this room um, that have a YouTube following or you're on social media and you have a following there. People who would jump at the chance to work with you. I mean, imagine Ian opening up and you get to contribute to his next episode of Dynamo Dream. Not that I'm trying to put any ideas in his head, but that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So that would be amazing. And um, so the point that I've learned from Collabs, the biggest lesson is just how capable the community really is. And um, when they're given the opportunity and a little bit of direction, they have always stepped up to the challenge and exceeded my expectations. And so I just hope we can make more of them. Um, which takes us to some history, collab number one. Uh, this takes us back to 2020. Um, something else was going on in 2020, but I don't think it needs to be mentioned. Um, and I was streaming consistently back then, about once a month for our community, and I needed a topic. And at the time, my kids were very into uh, construction equipment, and I thought that would be perfect. This is uh, a hard surface, complicated model, getting down to the nuts and bolts, literally, um, where I can sink my teeth in and, and explore countless, you know, hard surface workflow demonstrations. And then when it's done, I can show them and they'll think I'm the coolest dad, presumably. Um, and so uh, the more I thought about this, the more I realized how long this was gonna take at the pace I was able to go. Um, about one stream a month, you know, we're looking at probably a year or more of, you know, it might lose some interest after that amount of time. And so how could we possibly speed this up? And I remember something that a member pitched almost a year prior uh, Omar, who's, uh, I gotta give him a shout out because he's an MVP member, been with us forever, and now works with us as an instructor assistant. And so way back, he suggested the foundation of what the collab became in that, how about the instructor, instead of, you know, kind of holding our hands through the same asset, what if we do various assets within the same theme, essentially, and we can maybe roll that into some sort of production. And so I pitched that to the, to the team, to the, to the uh, viewers, and they, uh, 16 people joined, which might seem small and is small when you see how many people join the next one. But um, I was very excited that 16 people would be willing to commit their time to this random project that, I mean, on paper probably will fail. There's no 
professionals in the contributors. There's no one who really has any pipeline experience, even like linking in assets was probably a rarity. And, but let's try it. If it fails, no big deal, no pressure. But if it succeeds, that could be a pretty cool thing for our community. And so we needed a pipeline. And uh, pipeline should be in quotes, if you look at what we're using. Uh, Google Docs for a spreadsheet that's just very rudimentary asset tracking and manually updating and people you know, claiming assets. Uh, we use Google Drive for hosting our files, for syncing them across platforms and uh, automatic backups, that kind of thing. Um, very, very low level. None of this is designed for this purpose at all. But I feel kind of stupid showing you this, knowing who's in the room, knowing what kind of experience we have. But I also, it kind of worked. And we haven't fixed it. <laughs> so um, that's been great. We also used our community forum because uh, everyone created a thread and just posted you know, updates or questions as they had them. And uh, that worked well enough. That was our asynchronous communication. We also did um, one, that one stream a month, which was kind of broken into two halves. We had like a team meeting on the front end. Let's talk about vision for, for where we are in the process. Uh, we reviewed contributions. And then we also you know, put out any fires if there were any in the pipeline. And uh, the second half was workflow demo trying to, for me to try and lead by um, example. And so, you know, we had this very relaxed pace. It was, all, all things said, it was about, um, all things done, it was about, you know, eight months. Um, but it didn't take long, only a few months before the model starts to look better than I ever dreamed. Like, um, there's a whole story about why it's so accurate. Um, we, we found this website with blueprints for like literally every part of this machine. Um, and so that enabled us to be able to, to do every hose and every nut and bolt on this entire thing. And so it quickly went from a fun community project to the most complex, impressive model I've ever worked on. And I did very little of this model, you know, by the way. So I'm not tooting my own horn, but this is the community's work. And so when you have a model that looks this good, you start to wonder, how do we present this thing? Because this was not part of the initial plan, but I mean, it'd be a shame to render a, t a turntable, let's be honest. So how do we create something that, that is worthy of the effort that's been put in? And so we came up with this assembly animation idea, um, which uh, essentially, what I love about it is that it's, it makes a model-centric video interesting to more people. It's not, I think, just a CG thing like a turntable would be. Um, but for the CG people, it ends up being like a love letter to complicated modeling. And I love it for that reason, and we go back to it a little later in a different collab. Um, and so, you know, I was extremely happy with this, just blown away by what the community was, was able to do. You know, I, I wish I had a percentage to say how little I contributed to this um, in terms of the modeling. I, I will say that, like, the presentation was not part of the plan, and so I felt like it was my responsibility to present it as good as possible. So um, I did, like, the materials and the lighting. Uh, they c uh, covered, you know, 95% of the model. And so before it's even finished, people are asking, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do? What are we going to challenge ourselves with? A new subject? You know, how are we going to uh, refine the pipeline? And so an annual tradition is born just like that, which takes us to uh, collab number two the very next year. And, you know, some things I definitely wanted to change were the schedule. I wanted to see how, how far could we compress this and still be productive. So we went from a deadline-free eight-month first project to uh, I wanted four weeks, you know, all hands on deck, very you know, urgent kind of workflow. What can we do in four weeks? Um, I guess I was thinking if, if we could do it in four weeks, then maybe we can do multiple in a year or something. Um, but it ended up being kind of hectic. We, we had two streams this time, split that format so that the first half of the week has the team meeting part, and the second half of the week has the workflow demo, um, which worked out great, and we continue that in, in subsequent collabs. Um, we also adjusted the, the subject and aesthetic. Um, so, we found this piece of artwork from the community gallery from Vadim Zaitsev, and they were gracious enough to let us use it, uh, but also served as a consultant for um, filling out the rest of this world. We don't want to create just a still frame 3D version of this, but like we want to be able to track around it. Um, you know, this, this sort of style lends itself to kind of real time, uh, um, you know, optimization, game orientation kind of thing. I'm not going to say it's game ready, but um, it's that direction. And so we, we leveraged EV. And I think it's like 12 frames a second in the viewport, um, given all the leaves and stuff. But um, anyway, he served as a great consultant to help us fill out this world. And that was a great, 
uh, relationship we developed there. Um, also, we wanted to expand disciplines, and this has been a theme that comes up every, every collab. Um, if you think back to the first one, it really was only modeling, and so um, I want each subsequent collab to not overreach and try and do too many new uh, workflows, but, but just dip our toes or just add one new workflow, and then eventually we'll have a fully fledged, fully capable pipeline. Um, but I'm very sensitive to these things failing, and so I am kind of a, a scope um, I need the scope to be very doable, and so I keep it small intentionally. Uh, but we added modeling, we added sculpting on top of that for baking maps. We did uh, hand-painted texture maps, some animation and effects like making the water move. Um, we wanted the leaves to rustle in the trees, we wanted the grass to move. And so slowly added like three new disciplines, and now we have some veterans who join the next collab with those additional skills. And um, we also wanted to expand our contributor pool and so we went from 16 to 133, which is a bit of a jump. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn that you can have too many too early in a pipeline. Um, it can't really facilitate it great. And it was only my second time doing this. And so that was a hard lesson to learn the first week. I had to reach out to Jonathan Limpel, who's somewhere out here, to kind of split some of these duties with me. And um, uh, with so many people, we needed teams. So we broke down into three teams that worked really well for um, being like difficult, uh, skill level oriented. And so the house team was more um, intermediate because the modeling's not so hard, but, but working together as a team, you know, splitting the house into sections, making sure that your piece matches up with this other piece or this other artist, um, that added element I think made it kind of intermediate. And then the props team was more beginner oriented because you could sort of uh, point them there, pick an asset and they just, you work on their skills in a contained kind of asset. Um, that worked great. And then the nature team became the advanced team because we're dealing with organic structures, we're sculpting tree trunks, we're sculpting mountains, we're figuring out how to do clouds, um, water, all that stuff. So uh, that I, I took this into subsequent collabs as a great way to make sure all skill levels can be involved, not just advanced people, um, but everyone has a place. And I'm real proud of that being true. And then we also, major improvement, added a team leadership structure. Um, I say it was added, but I admit that it was very poorly implemented on my end. Um, uh, we kind of all started together, all contributors, all leaders at the same time, and it, that first week was very memorably hectic. And uh, uh, despite my inability to really you know, um, foster a tight communication between myself and the leaders, they did everything they could. They were super helpful with basically no direction. So a few of those leaders are in the room, and I says to them, great job, thank you for doing that. Um, and so despite some of these challenges, um, we were able to complete the project, and again, to a level that I did not anticipate. Um, I was extremely proud of what they were able to do. There's no sound here, but um, there's a really cool narrative component that happened um, with, uh, with the members completely from them, their idea, their implementation. So listen to it on YouTube if, if you're interested because uh, it's a pretty powerful narration that they came up with. And so again, immediately they start asking what are we gonna do next? And uh, this leads us to collab number three, which coming off of collab number one and two, I feel like I had a spectrum. So the first one was extremely relaxed. Uh, it took forever to complete. Um, and too long for what it was. And then collab two ends up being too compressed of a schedule, too many people, too hectic. And so I was primarily determined that number three would be balanced somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. And a way I wanted to do this was to return to a familiar workflow, that a familiar skill set that, that the community has proven that they're very good at. And so we went back to complex hard surface modeling. Um, we're also kind of continuing with this toy inspired theme where it's based on a a gunpla model kit. Um, my kids and I like to do that as well. And so we had a lot of reference from this kit and um, we, when we split up into teams, the robot team became the easiest team, so the beginner oriented team, they had the most reference. And every other team had to be designed from scratch. And that includes the endoskeleton team with the model kit, the negative space uh, in the middle, we were able to fill that with something because we want to kind of pay homage back to the first collab with the assembly animation, but, but it not be abstract or randomly piece, pieces like flying in uh, off, off screen. Um, this time it was gonna be mechanical, it was gonna be you know built essentially. And so um, that was a, a big challenge. That was one of the more advanced teams. The hangar team was probably more intermediate, but again, had to be designed from scratch. And uh, that was very fun and very challenging as well. 
Um, and then the machinery team had to design these parts that also functioned, and we had to rig them, and they had to um, pick up parts, they had to drill parts, they had to um, weld and all those different functions. Very much inspired by like uh, StarCraft II, the, the teaser that came out where he, you know, the, the thing is the, 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 what's he called, Space Marine is built. Um, the scene from Iron Man 1 where, you know, that first hero moment where he's like, he's uh, assembled. Um, so those were major inspirations for me and very fun to be inspired by that. So uh, the schedule also doubled. Um, so we went to two months and that, that proved to be a pretty good balance of, of urgency. So it was very productive and um, there was no lulls, but also it wasn't overbearing. And so I'm really happy with how two months worked out. This was definitely the more balanced um, uh, collab. And that first Pre-pro week, that's the most important thing in my experience because that was just me and the team leads getting on the same page and casting vision, discussing process, discussing um, pipeline, and that, that was critical, and, and the communication was very tight. They were the inner circle, definitely, of the project, and that went very well. Um, along with the theme ex uh, expanded disciplines, that continued. And so we had, a, the design is not maybe a traditional like CG skill set, but you know, it's, un it's understated how important that is. And so for this group to exercise, collecting a ton of reference, trying to figure out how to keep it consistent in a style um, and, and quality, um, that was, again, Omar actually made this design Bible all on his own. Uh, so you start to see this leadership, you know, natural leaders uh, step up in, the, in this environment and that's extremely fun to watch. Um, I mentioned rigging we had to do, the animation, the Macarena became like the ultimate test for the rig's capability for some reason. Um, you know, these inside jokes come up between the team camaraderie that I'm, I'm outside the circle on, so that's fun too. The uh, lighting, this is the first time that we, um, I, I delegated it out to a contributor. I'm, I'm, I like, I'm maybe a little specific with lighting, and so that was a big step for me, and they killed it. Um, actually, it's Omar again. You might think he's the only person on this team, but it's, it's not. He he's just happens to step up in some big ways. So uh, the VFX was also an, like a stretch goal. Can we add some spark effects, some smoke effects? And uh, they did excellent with that. And then kind of the last thing is the better personnel balance of having 50 contributors um, ended up being really, really good. A, a solid team where you could delegate a lot of tasks um, compared with this tight leadership. It was just a good balance. So I'm very happy that in the third one, we, we found a happy medium. And uh, where's my time? Okay, perfect. We, uh, we just finished number three, like a few weeks ago. And no one has seen it outside of the contributor team. I was hoping we could premiere that here. It's only two minutes. You into that? Okay. We'll give it a watch. Emergency Directive 303. Facility hibernation halted. Initializing assembly power grid. Nuclear detonation signature detected. Global disarmament period. 97 years, 21 days, 17 hours. Treaty status assumption, failure. Initializing peacemaker protocol in five, four, three, two,
that puts a huge smile on my face. There are people in this room that worked on that. We are looking very forward to premiering that here. Um, so yeah, I'll wrap up really fast. Uh, there is a course coming from this. I recorded over 50 hours of raw video from live streams, impromptu tutorials. That's gonna be edited into a very in-depth look at the whole process that is our collabs. And then there is another one coming in 2025, which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, yeah, ready to make some more Blender shorts. And someone else, just attempt something similar with your sub-community, please. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much for listening. It's an honor to be here. I look forward to mixing and being one out.